Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're talking kelp wasser, different methods of dosing, and my current experiments with the reef tank. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Deeds. So as you guys have know, I have been experimenting a lot with cow here lately, and I mean a lot. There's been a ton of experiments going on. And if you guys watched the stream I did with Chris from ACI on last Wednesday, awesome stream, tons of confirmation. Um, so definitely watch that one if you have it. Okay, so kelp wasser, what is it? Calcium hydroxide is a method of essentially dosing calcium and alkalinity to your tank. Some of them even have a bit of magnesium mixed in, so it's a fairly complete solution that you can dose to your tank. Now, there's a couple of problems with it. If you have a small tank, low demand, awesome, super easy way to do it. It's gonna help elevate your pH, so bonus. Now, if you have a really big tank and there's gonna become lots of coral, lots of take up, there's going to become a point where the kelp washer can't keep up with it and you got to consider other methods. So me personally, I am using a calcium reactor alongside with the kelp washer reactor on my tank. Now if you don't have a kelp reactor, not a worry. Um, if you watch the video with Chris, um, his method is doing six grams per gallon and dosing that to the tank. Now how much you can dose obviously is going to depend on your evaporation rate. Now my tank evaporates about a gallon a day. So that's about as much as I could possibly run through there via using the kind of like my ATO or dose container. Now for ATO, I don't recommend doing that because it's tied to your evaporation. Your evaporation is consistent and it's going to change at different parts of the year or how humid or dry your air in your room is. So there's lots of variables that can affect it. You know, you sell a coral, scoop out a fish, you forget about it, it's going to dump it a ton into your tank and it's going to spike all your levels and spiking is bad. Now on here, I have been using a calc reactor and the calc reactor has actually been a really cool way to do it because it keeps everything at max saturation. Now, if I was to just put calc into my ATO bin and dose it directly from there, so the six grams per gallon and I had, you know, a five gallon ATO bin, that would probably actually work out pretty darn well. Now, in my case, I have a 30 or 35, 40 gallon bin, and that would take over a month to go through and dose all of that. And by the time I did, likely the interaction with the air from above would help it fall out a solution to a certain extent and it would lose potency. Now, if you are doing calc, whether it's in a reactor, your ATO, you do want it to be sealed because air interacting with the surface is going to take away some of that potency over time. So other food for thought. So I decided to go with a bit of a hybrid approach to what Chris was doing. So Chris's, he was just dosing directly to the tank. Now his theory was that when you're dosing it directly and you have that pre-mixed up at max saturation, you're getting the most bang for your buck out of it. Now in mine, I just got a brand new calc stir and I wanted to use it, so I'm still using it. Um, however, instead of dosing calc 24 seven, I condensed it into 12 hours. Now I knew my tank evaporated roughly a gallon a day, so, or so I set my calc pump to dose 4,000 milliliters per day. And I did this during lights out. So prior I was doing it 24 seven. So I was just trying to boost the level overall where now as I'm doing it to help compensate and reduce the dip at night, which you naturally get. So when the lights are on, corals are photosynthesizing, they're naturally gonna raise pH in the tank. So if we take a look at my graph for the last few days. So I started doing this, it was either Wednesday or Thursday. Wednesday would have been my stream. Um, Thursday, you can kind of see that's probably when I started to do it. And we had a huge spike of pH, 8.2H, which was pretty awesome. If we look at the dip, the low before that is 8.12 and the day prior to that was 8.09. Now I started dosing the calc and you can kind of see the first night, now the first day. So my pH at nighttime was now 8.15, where if I look at the prior day, it was 8.12. So 0.13 boost. And if we look a couple days further, 0.809. So we have about a 0.07 boost. Now, but if you look at the next day, now my pH didn't get quite as high. It was 8.24. Now I'm no longer dosing calc in the day, so of course it's not gonna get as high. But my nighttime low has been raised. So instead of being like big, huge up and down spikes, it's now kind of condensing it and boosting it up overall as a whole. So that's pretty cool. Um, so we look at the next day and I had a high of 8.27 and a low of 8.18 and there's a little dip to 8.16. So if we look at this chart, every day 
my low has been getting a little bit higher with the exception of that one little dip between 7 a.m. and about 9 or 10 a.m. So that's pretty cool. It's really cool to see it slowly upping overall. So overall, I am actually kind of a fan of dosing at night. Previously, I never thought it was the best idea. I'm like, why wouldn't you just want to raise it all the time? But if you look at the terms of stability, we are now getting rid of the lows and kind of keeping using the natural high to its advantage. So I think that's pretty cool. So if you are going to do this, I think only dosing at night is a pretty cool way to do it, especially if you're doing other supplementation. Now, a couple of the wild cards in here, if we come in and we look at my alkalinity, that's been a little bit of a roller coaster. Um, so previously it was pretty darn stable. And you can see before I had a swing between 8.58, 8.5, 8.58, 8.5. So it was 0.08, super tiny swing. Whereas now, if we look at over the full period, it dropped down 8.29, and then it was up to 8.5, eight hours later, eight hours later, 8.58. So 29 to 58, yeah, 29 to 58, so 0.3 swing. So it's not crazy, it's a little more than I would like, so I'm gonna play and tweak this a little bit more. Um, and I know why this is happening, and it's very consistent, you can see the past couple days. Um, I have my calcium reactor to set off if my elk goes above 8.6. And you see 8.58, so it all takes a little more to push over and turns the calcium reactor off, and that's where you see that dip. So I'm going to tweak my code and get this dialed in a bit more and keep it so the elk is more stable. And I think I'm going to be in a pretty good place. Now, if you're thinking of using calc washer, and you don't have a calc reactor, super easy, mix up a big bin, six grams per gallon, and you can dose that. Now, ideally, get a doser, something that you can set to be fairly accurate. Again, not a fan of using the ATO pump because it's hard on the pump, first of all. And you're also gonna run into issues over time. If one, you don't clean it, or if you take water out for whatever reason, if you have to refill it, it could dump a bunch of it. So dosing pump, super duper consistent. So overall, there's been some awesome benefits for pH with kelk. Now the whole theory behind it, why everyone wants to use it is because supposedly the corals grow a lot faster. Now, it's still a little bit harder for me to gauge that. I mean, things are growing in my tank, things are looking awesome. So overall, I'm pretty dang happy. Now, whether or not it's growing faster since the pH, time will tell on that one. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the results. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this update on my bad scientisting on the reef tank and that battle on pH as we slowly up, 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 up it. And eventually, I think we're gonna get to that magic number one way or another, we're gonna get there. Um, now, if you guys didn't watch the stream I did last Wednesday, definitely check that out. I will throw a card on the top of the video or at the end of it if you're on a computer. Otherwise, if you guys have any questions, as always, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next update.